Hi, and welcome to the Visit Press release. With this short presentation, we want to report on the dental literature published in January 2022. We have chosen articles from a selected list of journals that we think might be of interest to the visit community. The Annals of Anatomy reported a study by Siebert et al. in which oculomotor function was investigated in relation to occlusion. In particular, they considered 100 subjects aged 6 to 78 years, which were distinguishing a younger and an older group, and tested, tested the convergence and divergence of oculomotor ability of the patients while occluding, occluding after a 0,5 or a 1 millimeter thin folds were positioned between the teeth, and with open mouth. The results showed significant differences independently of age and sex, although the oculomotor function of younger individuals did not seem to be altered by a 0.5 millimeter thick foil. This paper contributes to the evidence that ocular function is interconnected with the function of the stomatognatic system. This can be explained by the fact that the mandibular, maxillary, and ocular region are innervated by branches of the same nerve, the trigeminus, and the position of the lower jaw, the degree of tension of the masticatory muscles, the effect and localization of two enforces, and the position of the eyeball are registered in the same core area. Unfortunately, Siebert and colleagues reported the outcomes of the study, but not the raw values. And also, they did not consider the effect of type of occlusion or malocclusion, uh, which deserves further investigation. The Journal of Oral Rehabilitation gave room to two articles investigated TMD from the perspective of the patient's needs. The first article by Bronda and colleagues uh, reported about the study of the uh, discussion on Reddit about TMD, thus providing a summary of the way TMD is discussed on such a platform, which guarantees anonymity and therefore the possibility to express feelings and opinion on uh, sensitive, sensitive topics. The authors found out that most of the threads were under the subreddit topic TMJ, a keyword also mostly used on YouTube in lieu of um, TMD, uh, probably because more familiar to the layperson. By analyzing the first 10 comments of 50 threads, Bronda et al. found out that the most common topic of discussion were symptoms, and treatments followed by causes of TMD. Among the causes of TMD, the most mentioned were praxis, stress, and occlusion. Of the discussed treatment, oral appliance, therapy, and complementary and alternative therapies such as physical therapy were discussed, while the least discussed were surgery, behavioral therapy, and therapeutic use of marijuana. The most positively evaluated approach, approach was a trigger point inject, injection, followed by self-care and behavioral therapy. Brown and colleagues identified also the presence in the thread of a few but active TMJ experts, which comments were highly valued. This study makes us aware that a high percentage of people search for medical information on the internet and on social media. Thus, these communication channels should be considered um, also as a way to convey information to the general public. The second paper is by Dinsdale and colleagues and um, that discussed the experiences, needs and preferences of individuals seeking care for persistent intraarticular TMD. And for that they interviewed 13 patients from Australian private offices. The dialogue with the patients revealed that they encountered difficulties in navigating the health system and struggled to find practitioners who could address the complaints. 
Instead, they were relieved when encountering doctors or physiotherapists that would take the situation seriously, uh, thus stressing the need for patients to be listened to and have their symptoms validated. Some patients found frustrating the fact that their physical, mechanical symptoms, uh, functional limitations were not addressed, and instead they were recommended for psychological evaluation when their own perception was, the, uh, was that of being affected by a physical problem. The situation was even worse uh, if the patient was not experiencing pain. All in all, patients suffering from persi persistent intraarticular TMD searched for help, wanted to receive clear explanations about their conditions and also about how it could be treated. They wanted to regain control on their body and expected the doctors to be able to meet their needs according to their preferences. Thus, the authors concluded, difficulty at accessing care can have profound implications for individuals, including increased chronicity, reduced sense of legitimacy and financial burden. And further, acknowledging the importance of mechanical symptoms is an important first step to supporting those seeking care. In Cranio, Melis and colleagues presented the results of their systematic review on the effectiveness of oral myofunctional therapy in the treatment of TMD. Based on their selection criteria, they could include only four studies, which were different enough to not allow them to perform a meta-analysis that does analyze the cumulative outcomes. Also, they did not deem the articles analyzed as high-quality evidence. However, the evidence stemming from the articles show that oral myofunctional therapy is efficacious for the treatment of temporomandibular disorders, both alone or in combination with other conservative treatments. In particular, they concluded that exercises aimed at con correcting the head and neck posture, as well as active and passive oral exercises, reduce musculoskeletal pain and improve motor function of the oral structures. The Japanese Dental Science Review published a review article by Ali and Sumita, which collected a number of recommendations for prosthodontic intervention on patients suffering from medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw and needing a denture. Osteonecrosis of the jaw is triggered by antiresorptive and antiangiogenic medications, including bisphosphonates and denosumab. In particular, the authors of the of, um, collected recommendation for the safety of the patients uh, with active osteonecrosis or at risk of osteonecrosis. This included preparation of a white denture base to enhance spreading of forces, careful removal of, of irregularities from the denture before it is fit on the patient. Antibiotics and mouth rinse should be used during fitting, and in general, the patients with osteoporosis of the jaw should maintain a high level of oral hygiene. In case of sore spots, prompt adjustment of the denture is highly recommended, and meanwhile, the denture should be used only for aesthetic purposes and not for mastication. Provisionals, as well as ill-fitting and loose-fitting dentures, are to be avoided in patients at risk of osteonecrosis. Implants should be avoided too, as well as a surgery, if alternative solutions are available. One of the selected articles, that by Goldner et al. of 2010, reported that after a two years follow-up, no complications were observed in patients treated with non-invasive prosthodontic therapy with telescopic overdentures and the heat polymerized, polymerized the resilient liner. For more technical details, I suggest taking a closer look at this paper. I also want to report on papers published in the Quintessence International. Almozino et al. interviewed on the phone patients which were treated with oral splints, alone or in combination with other approaches, to find out about um, 
the adherence of the patients to the treatment and the causes that led them to discontinue the use of the splint. Note that the splint was recommended either um, as a treatment for painful TMD in 80 patients and for non-painful sleep praxis in 19 patients. So um, the authors find out that patients that reported mild to moderate reduction of pain had higher adherence than those showing total remission of pain, most probably because they did not consider the appliance any more necessary. Patients with muscular uh, pain showed higher adherence than those with uh, other kinds of pain or no pain. In the bar plot, you can see the reasons reported by the patients for uh, discontinuing the splint. So that was either increased of pain or general discomfort, or um, they discontinued because they solved their problem. Papel et al. Um, published a systematic review and meta-analysis of papers analyzing the sagittal and transversal condyle inclination. Based on their selection criteria, they analyzed 20 articles which uh, revealed highly heterogeneous for several aspects, including type of device used, use of injaxis, reference plane, and study sample. Um, the results uh, reported by the authors show high variation and are often not directly comparable because taken with different reference systems. The most relevant findings of this article is that the literature has highlighted that skeletal 2 patients possess a steeper sagittal condylar inclination than class 1, while class two shows, 3 shows a flatter condylar inclination. Also, while variation is too high for sagittal condylar inclination, uh, studies tend to converge toward the transversal condylar inclination of 7 to 8 degrees. We can conclude that average values for articulation of patient spites is not recommendable, and instead individual values should be used. The Quintessence International has also published the second part of the article by Sarati and Tal, Functional Assessment of the Stomatognatic System, which focused on the discussion of the dynamic elements of the stomatognatic system, while the first part, published in November 2021, pertained uh, to the static elements. The authors present a discourse on the stomatognatic system, including morphological and biomechanical considerations, dynamics of the somatognatic system, compensation strategies, methods of analysis, relationship between the somatognatic system and body posture, and cognition. They concluded that it is futile to treat patients using a mechanicistic sectorial approach that misrepresents patient behavior and request, just as it is to affirm the absence of any structure-function relationship. The key sentence that to me best represents the author's approach is dentistry needs to employ objective, dynamic methods of analysis for the functional evaluation of the somatognatic system, embracing concepts of personalized medicine and interprofessional collaboration. So, in sum, this article is quite complex and dense of information uh, with a rich list of recent references, and thus it deserves a read. So uh, this presentation ends here. I invite you to contact us in case you want to know more about our activities. Otherwise, be ready for next press release. Thank you for listening and best wishes. <laughs>